Hey y'all, Uncle Jimmy here. When you speak for yourself, you're forced to think for yourself. And when you think for yourself, the sports world looks different. In order to enjoy this podcast and this show, you need to have the courage to look at the world from alternative points of view and not be offended when you disagree. Speak for Yourself isn't your Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram feed. SFY tells you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. So, welcome aboard, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. We start today with Andrew Luck. A handful of Colts fans booing gave many of us an excuse to avoid properly discussing Andrew Luck's surprise retirement. I raised my hand and plead guilty. Even though I had no problem with the booze, they did make me more reluctant to take a critical look at Luck's decision and career. Well, not today. Today, I'm starting to feel we've gone too far with the Luck sympathy. Today, I'm bothered by all the people trying to make Andrew Luck a victim. Pittsburgh Steelers guard David DeCastro, Luck's former roommate at Stanford, cited the Colts fans booing as proof that fans treat players like circus animals. Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers described the treatment of Luck as a little bit disgusting. Stop it. 15 <laughs> seconds of booze does not erase 15 years of loud cheering for Andrew Luck. Because of his athleticism and gift to play quarterback, Andrew Luck has been worshipped and catered to since junior high. Most elite athletes have been. Hell, I led my high school to its first football state championship <laughs> in 1984. Get the limo! Earned a mid-major scholarship and lost my damn mind. It literally took me five years to recover from the sense of entitlement. It wasn't until I abandoned my identity as a football player that I rediscovered self-awareness. Get him, Whitlock! Only delusion and entitlement would make someone believe NFL players are treated like circus animals and that a few seconds of booing is disgusting. Elite athletes are worshipped, and the worship makes them overly sensitive to criticism. Yesterday, in general terms, we gave Andrew Luck a pass. I don't have a problem with Luck retiring. He has every right to do what makes him happy. But his retirement does tell us something about him as a football player. He played the game because he's good at it, not because of an intense love for it or an insatiable desire for competition. He was the wrong guy to replace Peyton Manning. Luck's lack of football passion made him a woefully inferior leader in comparison to Manning. You think Peyton Manning would injure his shoulder snowboarding? Mm. Football was too important to Manning to take those kinds of risks. You think the frustrating process of rehabilitation would make Manning tap out two weeks before the start of the season? Tap out. No way. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Uncle Jimmy said something profound on yesterday's show. Take a listen. Andrew Luck is the Dwight Howard of football. (laughs) Number one pick, (laughs) came out with big expectations, had all the skill, size, talent. Everyone thought he was going to be the next big thing. I hate to admit it, Andrew Luck has more in common with Dwight Howard than Peyton Manning. Uncle Mm. Jimmy was right. All right, joining the desk now are Fox Sports NFL analyst T.J. Huchmanzada and the NFL Network's Bucky Brooks. Marcellus, I'll yeah. start with you. Have we given Andrew Luck a free pass? <laughs> of course we did. Um, <laughs> if you really know what his story is highlighting, it's something that we've been saying in peace over the year or two since Andrew Luck has really been going through this injury roller coaster. It's the fact that likability puts fans, puts people, puts evaluators in a haze. And because of that likability, Nothing can be wrong. You can go through any hiccup. You can face any hurdle. And when Andrew Luck was facing those same adversities, we'll give him a pass. I highlighted three months ago about Andrew Luck snowboarding while injured, and no one cared. You did. I remember. Hell yeah, I did. I do a lot of stuff that people don't necessarily (laughs) remember or get (laughs) until later. And when it jumps in your face, all of a sudden, and A.B. comes out. And why I highlight likability? Because A.B. right now is in the news because of this chaos and what is he doing with this helmet issue and who is he? And we shoot the messenger and forget about what's the message. We destroy A.B. because he's not likable. Who respects A.B. and his acumen? How dare he talk about the NFL's rules when he had a great case against the NFL but was the wrong messenger to send that message? So what? 
Andrew Luck is going through is the privilege of likability. <laughs> when, when you're anointed before you even step on the field, the next John Elway, all we're doing is waiting for the next John Elway. Even when we see signs that go against that thought, we still give him the pass with the forecast that he's going to be that, but he never realized it. No, I think he has been given an ultimate pass. And now that we've had more time to really digest what has happened, he did leave his team in a bit of a bind retiring two weeks before. Now, I know the realization comes when it comes, but it wasn't optimal for the franchise quarterback to walk away and leave the franchise in a bind. In terms of the booing and the sympathy and the things that go, look, we know what we're getting when we sign up to play the game. We know that we're subject to criticism. We know that we're living our life out as a public soap opera for people to criticize. He has to understand that. That's part of the position. That's part of what he's been given. That's part of the responsibilities that come with the position. When it comes to Andrew Luck and as we look at his career, I will say the hype far exceeded the production. Ooh. He was anointed, anointed as John Elway, as the best quarterback prospect since John Elway, and we continue to tout that, even though when you really look at the performance and the production on paper, he didn't play to that standard. He didn't play like the best quarterback in the game. He played well, but he didn't play like a top five quarterback. And so as that, as he leaves, we need to remember him as such, a good quarterback, but definitely not the great one, not one of the greatest that we've ever seen. Um, he, we're all in agreement here. He, he was given a pass, but I'll say this. He could have been on his way. We, I don't, I don't want to just kill him because he, he didn't play long enough to get to John uh, Elway's stature. Could he have reached it? Very possibly he could have. He was given a pass because the way he retired, when the season is right around the corner and you're, you saw it on his face, it – it killed him to have to say, I just can't do it anymore. You, for him to open up and be that vulnerable on national TV, he had to have been in a lot of pain, number one. And so he was given a pass because of the raw emotion that he showed. And there's not one player, number one, you're not giving up $22 million, I believe that was his base mm. salary. Eight. And a mm. chance, this team has a chance to do something special this year with him as a quarterback if you're not in extreme pain mentally and physically. And so he was given a pass because of that vulnerability he showed, and I, I just can't do it anymore. And so did we, did he, was he given a pass? Yeah, but I, I believe it was rightfully so. Uh, uh, mm. Listen, I, and I think he has every right to do what he did. But I do think it says something about him. When you lay out a scenario, T T TJ, he's looking at a team that's a potential Super Bowl team, and he tapped out. And there are some quarterbacks that we celebrate. There are football players who we celebrate who never tapped out. Had, take me out on a stretcher, take me out. I'm going to bite my finger off or have a tip of it cut off to continue to play. That is what we've always celebrated in football. And I guarantee you, again, Steve Berline had some very critical comments online. He's the only one that really, I thought, just like went at him hard. And that's because Steve Berline knows, and y'all know, there's a lot of guys that play hurt, play through pain. And so I've said this before, and I said, and then I would say a year, year and a half ago, a Colts employee walked me through like the difference between Peyton Manning as a leader and Andrew Luck, and what an enormous gap there was between those two, and the impact it had in the Colts locker room. And, and this is why, again, I, I say, J Uncle Jimmy's little comment about comparing him to Dwight Howard, there's some accuracy to it because Andrew Luck's a bit of a goofball and not really a football person, and that's why I think it's easier for him to walk away. I think that comparison to Dwight Howard is apt. It's funny because, look, I want you to go back. Before Dwight Howard was known as the goofy Dwight Howard. Orlando. Dwight Howard in Orlando was maybe one of the more dominant players that we had seen. Was. Dwight Turn Howard, to like, he took, took him to a championship mm -hmm. game. But he always left you wanting more. Dwight, man, if Dwight had just, if he just, it's kind of the same thing with Andrew Luck. Now, we've given him excuses because what we've said, oh, Ryan Grixon crushed his career. That's the Ryan truth. Grixon didn't that, do this. That's Ryan, the truth. Franchise quarterbacks make everything go away. Mm. Part of the reason we pay franchise quarterbacks $25, $26 million, they're supposed to make everything that's, else that's, around that's them. That's a myth. Correct. But, but that's TJ, a myth. No, but, TJ, that, but, that, TJ, but that's what we're, that's what we're saying. That's your point. TJ, 
Uh, Russell Wilson had no offensive line. They had basketball players playing on the <laughs> offensive line <laughs> for him. And, and so, and Russell Wilson has survived. Mm. And well, Russell Wilson <laughs> is a great athlete that moves around. Oh, Andrew Luck's not he, a great no, athlete. No, he is a great athlete. <laughs> yeah, Russell, he is. Russell Wilson he is. played with five Hall of Famers on defense. You tell me one Hall of Famer Andrew Luck had on the defensive side of the ball in his career. He got one coming if he stayed there. It was a rookie in the rookie of the, the year. Line, but, but, yeah, so, yeah. but wait, when he, first, when he first started out, didn't he have Dwight? Dwight Freeney right. and it Robert Mathis. They, the they, the they, they, they were at the end, still at the end of the career. Yeah. But, but I'm saying, part of what you do when you take a guy, one, number one overall, the expectation that he's supposed to be one of those gold jacket type performers. He was on his way. Two, when you're paying him $25 million and we say he's a franchise quarterback, he is supposed to elevate the play of everyone around him. That's the <laughs> expectation. Let's go deeper. Let's go here. Okay, when I was coming out, Coming from Columbia University, they asked me a question that they asked Andrew Luck. He said, hey, man, you're a smart guy. Mm. Do you need football? Mm. That's my only issue with you. I see the film. Mm. I understand you're playing against accountants and CEOs in this Ivy League. That I'm not even going to demerit you too much. But tell me the truth. You know other ways up the top. Y'all got six owners in the league that are Ivy League former students. No other players, but we got owners. Do you really need football? And they made me ask that question. You know why? Because of this moment, when there is going to be a moment of confliction, when we all say in the locker room, ball to your fall. Mm. And most of us have to live by that. And I fell, and I fell on my face and took a lot of hell from people while I was still trying to ball till I fell. He didn't ball till he fell. He didn't ball till I fall. But with that said, I still respect what he said and what he did ultimately, because he's learned from his predecessors. How many times we've we been to the golf outing with the alumni? You see how they walk? And they can't walk. Yeah. They can't get out the cart. Oh, I'll pass on this hole, young fella. So he learned from those situations. And for them fans to take all of this, the summation of his career, whether it's a letdown or not, his football career is over. It's dead. You're going to boo him at his funeral? It's dead. He just said, I just lost one career. It was going wake. It was, it was a wake. Oh, you yeah. still? <laughs> what wake you going to? We booing that. I've been to wakes with a homie. He did dirt. And, and everybody know he, no one deserves to die, but he contributed to this situation a little bit. And they still don't boo that dude. They just, everybody say all the nice, glowing and things. And full of people. And that's where we are right and now. And don't distract us, Marcel. Okay. Right now, we are okay. analyzing. Now, I'm just letting you know. Yeah. I, I want to say this, because you bring, you touch on something that I've had a conversation with several NFL coaches mm. during the evaluation process when they're looking for guys. They've said <laughs> to a man, I want guys who don't have backup plans. Man, listen. I want guys who football is the That's only all option. That's talk, and y'all know no, it. No, and, and no, they, it's not They it's still not gonna, talk. when it it's, comes to a quarterback like Andrew Luck, they still gonna draft him number one. But they're still drafting no, no, him no. number one. See, that's not the argument. Yeah, because yeah. one, quarterback is a special position. Right. But there are NFL people that are sitting around going, this guy's too smart for the game and had it's other a, options. I'm and telling they would you, still as draft him sitting number in one. Rooms, yeah, but they asked the question. Sit, sitting in reason. rooms. Right. You talk about a Marcellus. Guys come from Ivy Leagues. Guys come from Stanford. We will ask these questions. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're a scout. Much, the kid from how Florida much do State. They love it? Oh, yeah. The black kid from Florida State. Myron Rowe. Yeah, Myron Rowe. Because he was now, a Rowe scholar. Now, <laughs> if you're in a draft room and you have a chance to draft Andrew Luck, number one, and there's anything that's holding you back, because he went to Stanford and he has other options. Are you not drafting him number one? No, we were taking, but it's still a conversation. It's still no, no. a conversation. It's still that a conversation. Even though you it's have still the conversation. What's the point and of I'm not having a conversation to if you're not going to move on with it? I'm not saying that I'm not one, because I prefer to have, like, in st studies would show, guys who graduate, guys who play a great college end up playing longer or whatever. However, you still have an old school mentality yep. that guys want players who football is everything. I'm going to be there early. I'm going to stay late. I'm going to give my last pinky to stay on the field. There is something to be said for it. That is the mentality that we have. I, I'm, with you, I'm with you on that because that's what I would be. But think about with all the emphasis on player safety, with all the emphasis on you can't even touch the quarterback, this probably could have played a role in this as well. He's like, man, my body, they doing everything they can to protect us, and I still can't stay healthy. Well, look. I think those are definitely his thoughts. I do think Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, I'm looking at Eli Manning. Unicorn. They're going to have to get him out of with a stick of dynamite. He will not leave. <laughs> and there's a bunch of guys like, and again, when you start talking about the all-time great players, the Ray Lewis's and things like that, they all, Bruce Smith, 
He, he, what did he play till 40? Yeah. <laughs> Damn near. But uh, they love the game. I get He and, likes it. That's my point. <laughs> but that comes out in that questioning, do you like the game or love the game? It's the same in business. You if think you, you love go, it? Hey, go to Silicon Valley right now with a new idea and try to get some investors and VCs. First thing you're going to say is, um, are you going to die if this doesn't work out? Is your life going to be ruined if this doesn't work out? And if you say, no, I'll be fine, then they're like, get out of my room. Because we need to know your sacrifice is connected to your commitment. You all in. Your sacrifice is connected to the consequences. And let's just be real about this. When you hit that last wall, because we every day in football is a wall, and then there's one wall you're like, I ain't running through that one. When you hit that last wall, oh, Ray Lewis is like, nah, nah, nah. One more to go through. Whereas Andrew Luck, like myself, starts to think, but what about my kids? What about the rest of the world that I haven't explored? And he got to that place faster than we expected. But why put that on him when that was his script? We tuned into his TV show and got mad at his script. I can't do that. I say, I respect you for what you did and my bad on my expectations. All right, I want to ask a second layer that I addressed in this, you three former football players. Yeah. I think professional athletes are way too sensitive. <laughs> that oh. just cater to and pampered, mm -hmm. and, my, and, and again, who else has a job where there people applaud? Uh, all actors, in, entertainers, theaters, thespians, uh, comedians. And, and you know what? They're delusional too, just like you Just like common athletes. people. <laughs> Y'all commit more crimes than us. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get into the statistics? <laughs> Your neighbor next door that's carrying the post, I, I, I'm gonna say post that, office, I, I'm man. just going to keep right. it all the way real. Let's real. Trust what? me. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to not rob a convenience store when you got a pocket full of money in your pocket or in the bank. No, I know that so, now. I give you me, that. My morality shot through the roof when I started getting paid. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. You learned that the hard way. Yeah. When, when that belly, be belly button on your back, you hungry? <laughs> oh, man. You, you ain't but, as nice. Anyway, <laughs> all right. I just think y'all too sensitive. I think you are. I think you're on to something, but uh, let's just push back. <laughs> you're not going to get us to agree with you right now, obviously. <laughs> Look, uh, Andrew Luck came out in action, and then some other players came out in words. Uh, you talk about Aaron Rodgers and former roommates. Everybody's coming in this course with Andrew Luck. But you say sensitive? Was Jim Brown sensitive? He did the same thing Andrew Luck did. Uh, was Barry Sanders sensitive when he wrote that check and said, peace out? Was Patrick Willis sensitive? I'm not talking about Ron Andrew Gorkowski. Luck. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about Athletes their, oh, in general? Yeah, the reaction to and how dare anybody criticize second guess Andrew You booing Luck. at my funeral and you all of a sudden now don't want me to think? You're, that's not, that's Andrew Ka Luck in the casket, not you other athletes that are all acting We know, like and look, we can forecast, we can forecast what happens to him, what happened to me, especially if I'm lesser than him. Athletes are treated like circus animals. Give me a break. No, I don't agree with that part. Mm. No. Circus animal. I'm it's, not no an animal. What are animal? I'm out. It's not, it's not. <laughs> I'm out of that. It's not a sensitivity type of thing. It's a, everybody wants to be liked. I don't care who you are. Everybody wants to be liked and appreciated for what they do and what they've done. And what Andrew Luck has to realize, and every athlete, they appreciate you and they like you for what you do, not who you are. They, they liked him because he was a great football player and he played on a team that, that they rooted for. Not because of who he was. They didn't get a chance to know him for the person that he is. And so when he retired, he was hurt when he heard the boos. And a lot of players, when you hear negative things about you, you, you don't even know me. You don't even know me. What, what you talking about me for? You don't even know me. 15 seconds. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Right. I can remember in Buffalo, my second season, I remember early in training camp, there was a headline that said, Shopper dropped Brooks. And it's the first time in my life that it played out that, what, oh, oh I'm not good enough? Mm. Oh, I'm going to get cut? I can be out of here? Mm. The sensitivity stems from, most of the time, people don't really give us the real. Even our coaches don't give us the real when it comes to whether we play well or not. We sugarcoat it. Your family sugarcoats it. No one tells you, hey, dude, I need more out of you. And so when you don't live in the truth, sometimes when someone lobs a criticism, you do overreact to it as opposed to seeing it what it is. Now, that said, it is hard to sometimes take critiques from those who haven't walked in your shoes. Mm. It is just one of those things that when you're in the locker room, that is the truth. It, when you're that in the locker the room truth. and you see the beat writers come in and you see the heart, because look, you're wicked with the pen, Jason. You're wicked with it. You were wicked in the Kansas City Star with the pen. And sometimes it can be a lot to read those words and be like, wow, this guy is really at me. And so you feel like it's personal. And so it is hard to get used to taking criticism 
when you've never had to take an interview And like when that. your life is surrounded. 15 years of worship, and then it's all eliminated because of 15 seconds of I wouldn't say it's eliminated, but for him, I'm sure it had to have been hurtful. It's not even eliminated. It's summed up. That's how it feels in that moment. It's like, this is the summation of my experiences. No, it's you. not the summation. Well, well that's but how, that's it how feels. he took you it. You can't it's tell like, somebody how to feel, especially when yes, it happens in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't that wicked with the kid. You wicked. You ain't that wicked. And here's the craziest part about it all. When you're Andrew Luck and you're in this situation, you're looking around and saying, look, man, this is how y'all really feel. This is just the highlight. It's conditional love. People get mad at me when they say, you're so nice. But I also know that you don't really like me. You like what I'm doing. So when that gets highlighted, don't get mad at the him. The same person booing for them 15 seconds actually does love Andrew Luck. No, it don't. Yes, they do. There's a thin line between <laughs> love and hate. Yep. And that love is what creates the booze. Yeah, I and agree it, with that. And so I, again, I agree with and, that. And then, and then I'm just gonna say, because we have gone long, but, but but Bucky was in Kansas City with Tony Gonzalez, and, and this is why I have so much respect for Tony Gonzalez. I lit him up his entire second season in the NFL, and then at the end of the year, I lit him up and said, This dude may be a bust. And that dude treated me well the entire time he was in Kansas City then gets to the Hall of Fame and thanks me uh, for, for the criticism <laughs> and, and all that. Again, if you want to be a champ, you got to have a little thicker skin than these guys running. David DeCastro, we treating athletes like circus animals. Get out of here. Don't say that. Hey, guys. Jason Whitlock here. September is National Life Insurance Awareness Month. Most people aren't aware of that. In fact, most people aren't aware they need life insurance at all. That's why 40% of Americans don't have it, but getting life insurance doesn't need to be difficult or expensive. Right now, prices are the lowest they've been in 20 years, and Policy Genius has made it easier than ever to get covered. Policy Genius is the easy way to shop for life insurance online. In minutes, you can compare quotes from top insurers to find your best price. Once you apply, the Policy Genius team will handle all paperwork and red tape. If you need life insurance, but you just haven't gotten around to it, National Life Insurance Awareness Month is as good a time as any to get started. Go to PolicyGenius.com, get quotes, and apply in minutes. You can do the whole thing on your phone right now. Policy Genius, the easy way to compare and buy life insurance. TJ Husmanzada and Bucky Brooks are back. Time now for a big story. Let's move to Pittsburgh, where the Steelers locker room appears to be a lot calmer so far this year. Ever since the departure of Antonio Brown, Pittsburgh is clearly optimistic that there will be less drama this season with Big Ben pushing back hard against the idea that Mike Tomlin has lost the locker room, saying, quote, when people speculate things, very rarely is it true. So we all just kind of shook our heads, kind of laugh. It's unbelievable the things people will make up from the outside looking in. All right, I think the Steelers' whole offseason has been about narrowing the chaos to A.B., A.B. was the reason why Mike Tomlin got criticized as a leader. A.B. was the reason why Big Ben's lack of leadership was perhaps exaggerated in their mind. Uh, fair to attribute Tomlin's leadership problems to Antonio Brown. Oh, we're going to put this all on A.B., huh? Yeah, I am. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Uh, one, Tomlin was there first. So whatever was in place in terms of culture, in terms of enforcement, in terms of restrictions, should have been in place to make A.B. fit into that mold, not all of a sudden the mold changes for A.B. in that relationship. Uh, two, this offseason sounds like someone who is really trying to deal with the symptoms and not the illness. And you ever get caught up in that, uh, if you ever go to the doctor and you keep chasing these symptoms, you need to get to the cause first. And I'm a. not B. sure. Hmm? A.B. Nah. He's the eldest, but go ahead. Okay, okay. A.B. Roethlisberger the was there before him, too. <laughs> Everybody there, elder statesmen, <laughs> but it wasn't on them. It's on the young homie, huh? It is not on the OGs. Okay. And the last thing I want to say about this is I hope that their season is not drama-free. Because part of team building and part of team success is overcoming adversity. And if you look at all the Super Bowl winners that you can see, They've all had to overcome something, whether it's the Patriots and the demise in Foxborough or Carson Wentz gets hurt and what the Eagles going to do. Oh, they're going to win the Super Bowl. You know, you look at these situations, everyone has adversity to deal with. It's not always in scandal, and it can't always be pinned on one player. 
But with that said, they're going to hit a dry patch. They're going to hit a rough spot. And if they still go on Kumbaya and Fantasy Island out there, maybe they're not mentally ready for that moment. Look, I think A.B. serves as the example. So, no, all the problems weren't with him, but I think he serves as the shining example as to what was going on in the locker room. When it plays out in real time in Oakland, and then you think about the stuff that they were dealing with in Pittsburgh, it does make you think, man, maybe A.B. was really not all of the blame, but he certainly deserves his share of it. Because when you go back and you look, the guy missed the game. The guy had the Facebook Live post. The series of incidents that have kind of come along with him, it makes it hard to not pinpoint him. Yes, Ben Roethlisberger has not been the model leader. Yes, he doesn't necessarily do it the way that we've seen other quarterbacks do it. But when you see A.B. go to another locker room and have some of the same issues, it does kind of absolve Mike Tomlin and the Pittsburgh Steelers for the lack of leadership that may have existed in the locker room. No, not at all. Mm. He, he's part of the blame. A.B., he's part of the blame. He played I, with Chad. Like, I can't right, but, believe you're saying this. <laughs> but when, when, when you have a head coach that should establish a culture yes. and a set of rules, a set of rules. Now, your best players are going to be allowed to break the rules to a certain degree. But when you step over that line, mm. nah, that's it. You, you have to enforce it. You have to enforce But this will trip me. You look at what Ben Roethlisberger said about James Washington. He texted me, called me, talked to me in person, thanked me for that when he killed him. The reason James Washington did that because he's James Washington. Say it. Now, when he becomes James Washington mm -hmm. and everybody knows that name. J-Dub. <laughs> you, you criticize him like that again. Yeah, I bet. And see if he does this. He did that because. So he's going to lose his humility, and that's Ben's fault. I'm not saying that's Ben's fault. Ben act like it was okay to call James Washington out because he thanked him for it. James Damn. Washington is trying to earn his way no. into the league. He's trying to become a household. He's was, trying to become a household name. That was and great so, so uh, again, great comeback, but he's in, not right. Look, look. Not how it works. I, this is what I'm telling if, you. If James Washington comes back at Ben Roethlisberger publicly like AB do, what's gonna happen? Mm -hmm. Holler, let me let me come holler. Mike at you. Tomlin is gonna yeah, holler yeah, at him. Come holler at you. Exactly. Yeah. But if AB goes at Ben, Mike Tomlin is gonna. Y'all need to handle you that. You can't let. It's different. You can't you. have your personality be willy nilly based on success or failure. You need to be the same guy. I'm not letting Ben point. Roethlisberger call me out. He's Don't your do that. quarterback. He's your leader. Look. I want to go back to Mike Tomlin because I'm just blown away, TJ. You play for Marvin Lewis, man. And to me, I think Marvin Lewis never got his proper respect as one of the best coaches in the NFL. What he did in Cincinnati with Mike Brown and how cheap the Brown family is is amazing. I agree and with that. Had, and, you know, he, he had one big problem at a wide receiver in terms of establishing a culture. He had to deal with Part Chad. of it. He's part of it. A big part of it, though. But it's not. Why couldn't Chad get on board with what? this black coach? Why couldn't A.B. get on board with Mike Tom and this black coach? This is what drives me crazy, and, and we just excuse it. Eight to me, what I'm hearing from Ben, what I'm seeing from Tomlin, they so glad to get But Ben could have handled this different. Let's go back. You bringing in Chad and um, Marvin. Yeah. Carson handled it so different that they never had those type of problems between Chad and Carson. Thank you. Look at the problems between A.B. and Ben. Because the way Carson handled it was completely different than the way Ben handled it. And don't act like oh, that. Ben is wrong. Yeah, don't act like that blown knee in the playoffs uh, could have changed the entire narrative of what happened in Cincinnati with Carson Palmer. Let's not act like if that playoff game and he doesn't lose his knee. Y'all were rolling that year. So who knows what that would have been? The whole narrative changes. But that's football. The thing about this is, we can't forget how it goes, and you know how it goes. When you're a freshman, when you go into the first meeting room and the seniors are in the back, or you're a rookie and the vets are in the back, you don't just unroll your personality day one. You got to, one, <laughs> earn your keep, earn your way, find your way, and then show your voice. And that's how it goes. And then everybody's saying, you changing. You're like, no, this is the this unveiling is of who I really am. But in deference and reverence to the situation dynamics, I'm a slow play this. A.B. slow play this. Roethlisberger slow play, play this. Ask Jerome Bettis and them about Roethlisberger day one to now. Not the same. So let's not act like this brand newness is a negative connotation. That's how all rookies come into the league. Then they start to feel themselves. Darnell, I, I know you agree with everything I said. <laughs> uh, that clapback was strong. Did miss anything? I don't know, Whitlock, but yeah, <laughs> let's think of the AFC North, where Browns head coach Freddie Kitchens was asked if he was at all concerned that Baker Mayfield and OBJ have yet to play together in the preseason. Check this out. 
just because there wasn't in team drills doesn't mean they weren't working. Um, you know, it's, it's fairly easy. You know, you just you learn what to do. You work to learn what to line up. You learn what to do. You learn the depth and the area you're supposed to be in, and you've got it just about figured out. Are you guys buying that he's not all, at all concerned? Yeah, he's very concerned. Uh, I, he's a first-year head coach, so he has no. Even if things were going well, he's paranoid and nervous because this is his first time. Well, I certainly remember my first time, and I was scared to death. Man, to I'm not ahead. telling you. <laughs> What you talking about, Wit? It's around lunchtime, <laughs> too. You a fool. Look, it's amazing that when you come from humble beginnings, people always trip off when I say, like, I, I was happy being broke. Because I didn't know any better. I didn't have any different reality to choose from. So therefore, when I ain't get much, I thought it was everything. This is how he's feeling. He's like, I ain't got no alternative, y'all. <laughs> These dudes already haven't worked out that much. What do you think? I'm supposed to think about, whoa, what if they could have? He's living in the reality that has been dealt to him, and he's saying, we're going to be fine. Now, in his ideals, I think he wanted something different, but this is the reality he's living with. He's just going to be fine. Look, man, these guys have thrown the ball enough to know the chemistry and the connection, to understand the body language that's necessary, to know when people are coming in and out of their breaks. They've worked together here in L.A. They've done it in many camps and other things where they've had their private workouts. It will be fine. Will it maybe take a game or two to fully get on board? Not enough to really make it a big deal. He's concerned, but he, he can't come out and say, I'm concerned. Because then they're going to get concerned. Like, man, do we have enough time with each other? Right. If they play well in the game, it won't matter. And if they don't, then, oh, man, we should have had him practice more. Bucky Brooks is back. We're joined now by the Athletics' Vinny Bonsignor. Yeah. Let's move to Carly Lloyd, oh who continues to make waves in the football world. Since her 55-yard field goal during Eagles practice last week, now her trainer says Lloyd just got a call from an NFL team offering to let her kick in a preseason game this week. She has a scheduling conflict with the U.S. Women's National Team, so it's not going to happen. But one NFL player, Keenan Allen, weighed in on the idea today, tweeting, quote, Sounds sweet till somebody blocked the kick, and all of a sudden, mm. she on defense. Mm. Would be like the stampede scene in the Lion King movie. <laughs> she do got a boot, though. <laughs> uh, the question here is, would Carly Lloyd playing in a preseason game be a good idea? No, wouldn't be a good idea. Not football as we know it, not the spirit of football, not putting the best players out there in that position. And it's crazy that she literally admits that she needs help with all aspects of kicking. Like her words, except the mental part, which is a huge part. But let's not understate any motor skill position or any motor skill sport. It's about 10,000 hours doing that repetitive motion all the time. So don't tell me baseball player, oh, well, you know, I got great hand eye, I can play hockey. And no hockey player, oh, I got great hand eye with the stick, I can play golf. Y'all better calm down with this. So I'm gonna use her words against her. She says, yeah, I'm good with the mindset and I know I have to work on my steps and my technique. That's exactly what the damn position is. So <laughs> if I get an NBA tryout and my words, I say, you know what, mentally I'm ready. All I gotta do is working on my dribbling and my shot, I'm good. <laughs> Y'all better take away my audition that <laughs> moment. This is unreal because what we're doing is trying to bring an equal playing field to something that's not even equal within the gender of men. It's not, look, you can discriminate in football. It's called the combine, damn it. How tall are you? How much you weigh? Do this test, answer this question. I don't like that, get out of here. <laughs> and now all of a sudden we're gonna try and level that it's a meritocracy, y'all, and I don't know if she qualifies if she's never even done it. I don't know where this push is coming from. Now, you talk about the meritocracy. I think because of the meritocracy, I would give her an opportunity to kick. Look, I'm at a high school. We have a female kicker. We let CC come out. She knocks him through. If she's good enough, she'll be the starting kicker. With Carly Lloyd, I think most coaches think the same thing. If she shows repetitively that she can knock in 40-yard field goals, 50-yard field goals, she will have an opportunity. Now, I'm not saying she could do it today, but maybe in a year or so, if she fully committed to yeah. doing it right. as a practice squad player, absolutely, I think she'd get an opportunity. Where's the, the, the fine print? Where's the fine, fine print? The fine print. What fine print? Keenan Allen talked about it. Help me, brother. Scar. When you go on defense, when that kick is blocked, when you have to play, are you playing 10 on 11? No, but, look, but why, why would they be blocked? If I'm, I'm on my special Every teams, I'm on kick. my special teams coach. Let's make sure she's protected. They're not blocked. Hey, did oh. you watch 
Miami and Florida the week this I did, weekend. I did watch it. One of the kickers ran a fake field goal. That's I did. Field goal football. I did. Is, is Carly Lloyd going to run a fake field goal? I mean, I don't know. How fast, her the ball? How fast is Carly Lloyd? Can Carly Lloyd get out the way? If Carly Lloyd is fast, I'm going to give it a rock. Mm. So what you're saying is that it would be mm. 10, on, 10 against 11 uh, yeah. when, when she's out there. Not to mention the fact that it would take a year – and that, even that wouldn't guarantee it because what I saw when I look at that video is her taking, what, five, six steps yeah. to generate the power to kick a 55-yard field goal. She needs to do that in half the time to have any type of success in the NFL. Kicking in the NFL is snap, put the ball down, kick. It's not snap, put the ball down, kick. Mm. Every time, if she has to do that in half the time, and I don't know if she can to generate the power that's needed to kick it, let alone the accuracy that's involved and the pressure and people we, in the stands. We so. expect her to come right out the gate and be on the squad. But they're saying We're to, about, they're they're about saying to play her on, on Thursday game. night. Is your saying, you know we have a rugby player, Christian Wade, who played but he's in been England. in training camp. He's Just, been involved but he had never in everything. Played football before and that's and we fine. Gave him opportunity. Like we're talking about Carly Lloyd. Look, she goes in the preseason game. Maybe she has an opportunity to kick a PAT and an extra point. But if this is a serious deal, we talk about a year. There's no reason why she can't be able to. If come you in give her that year, then I would be okay with that. But not like because it's set up to fail. I'll, I'll say this, Bucky. If the standard to get an NFL tryout is one video, one Man, kick. we saw Justin Gatlin. We've seen guys come off the streets and run. I mean, like, there are plenty of players who have had opportunities to get sniffs in the league who've never played football before. All these basketball players that are playing tight end, Rico Gaines and the like, Antonio Gates had never played ball before we put him on the field. Bucky, you're making a good point, and, uh, and, and I appreciate it. However, however, we've seen one kick. We... Trust me, they edited out the misses because there were misses. <laughs> sure. No, no, no. Come on, yeah. No, absolutely. she's admitted that. They've had, they showed the one that she made. And so, mm. do I think it's a good idea? Actually, I do. Because it is a TV show. And people will tune in to watch. It's week four of the preseason. Right, and people will tune in. It's a TV show. But this whole little deal, we, we had this when Michelle Wee was in golf. It was, oh, can she join the PGA Tour? Or the L <laughs> the, yeah, the PGA Tour, I'm sorry. And we had that whole discussion. And back then, it was actually legal for people to have the discussion we just had here where people could actually say what they really think. Now it's virtually illegal because everybody goes off into la-la land and pretends like there w that, that having Carly Lloyd as your kicker put some restrictions on your special teams. You have to reconfigure your roster based on, well, she can only kick PATs or extra points or, or whatever. She can only kick... And then uh, the other thing that comes down to, we're, di we're dismissing how hard it is to be a kicker. Oh, for sure. Even at the high school, college level. Right. Because you have to make such a high percentage of the kicks to make it in the NFL. It's not just, oh, she can make one. It's can you do it 98% of the time when it comes to PATs, which are now 33 yards. And then these field goals, you got to be making like a 75, 80% clip. I just don't know if taking 10 steps proves that you can do that. <laughs> it, it doesn't because, like you said, it doesn't respect the elements. One, it doesn't respect that the rush is coming. Two, it doesn't respect the physicality of it. Three, it doesn't respect what the kickers do. And if you've been to an NFL practice or NBA practice, they really don't miss a lot. And then all of a sudden, it, that thing, that light, and then that switch goes off, and they miss a lot more. So that's one thing. But the curiosity to get her in the game, I feel for that one guy who's that fringe player to be a kicker on a squad, but he's not because there's a curiosity instead of who has really put themselves in position for this opportunity. But my grand point is this. They tell us in football, you have to be three years removed from high school or 20. And the reason they say that is because of the physicality. The reason they say is no NFL for you, youngster, who may be physically ready for it and good at that, uh, at that job because we have to wait to make sure you're ready for the rigors. But we're not going to now apply that here. And that's just... She doesn't have to be ready for the rigors. It just seems like that's a little hypocritical for guys ready for who have rigors. to stay. <laughs> how many kickers do we Bucky. see making... Like, I'm just Bucky, saying, how I many, guarantee you in college... When, when did we they, become this I guarantee kicker you and we got all these plans for kickers running Bucky, fakes I guarantee and doing you in stuff? College, it's, it's, you came off the edge on, kick, yes. on kicks. How many times did you run into a kicker or trample a kicker? And trust me, if you do it to a woman, the reaction is going to be a lot different. It is going to be different. Thank I mean, I, I guess it's be different. <laughs> the reaction would be different if you but don't do it too. Yes. Yes. You're not yeah, treating you them don't, seriously. Like you said, if you don't do it, you're, yeah, you're, yeah you'll you be. Can't win.
T.J. Houshmanzada is back with us. Time now for Darnell's question of the day. Ooh, ooh. Darnell, take it away. What's up, baby? Yeah, man, let's move to my Colts. We're mm. still trying to figure out a life after <laughs> Andrew Luck. Mm. The team has decided to let the QB keep almost $25 million in bonus money, e -e. Which, which gave Yahoo Sports Charles Robinson an interesting idea, suggesting in his latest column that owner Jim Ursay might want to pay back the money fans spent on season tickets when they still thought Andrew Luck would be playing. I don't know about this, but I want to ask you guys, mm. do the Colts owe their fans anything? Well, hold on. I I'm going to put this ball back in your court. Yes. yes. You a Colts fan. Yes. Right. Do they owe y'all something? They don't owe us nothing. At the end <laughs> of the day, I'm a Colts fan. I'm not just an Andrew Luck fan. So you knew at the beginning of the season that what if Andrew Luck got hurt game one mm -hmm. and he's out the rest of the season? Do I owe you money back then? Mm -hmm. It's the same result. Well, mm -hmm. I'll say with the Colts fans, and I can't even say no, Colts fans I don't think are asking this, Charles Robinson, Yahoo is, they feel like they've been misled throughout the offseason about Andrew Luck. Even having said that, I agree with you that you bought Colts tickets, not Luck exactly. tickets. Exactly. Exactly. I don't buy this whole misled argument just because – it's, it's not him getting cut or traded. This is him retiring on the Colts. So how come Jim Mercer and others can't be surprised as well? They act like, oh, I had to know that he was retiring. No, so I don't think it has much premise. Uh, it's a good theory. Situations change. Andrew Luck keeps his money. But the fans don't. Mm, that's kind of a good theory to try and build it on. But because it caught, I think, everyone by surprise, I'm not with it. Uh, I went to a KC and JoJo concert this weekend. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, yes. It was called Jodeci, but there was no KC and JoJo, right? I want my damn money back. Hold up. Dalvin and Devontae. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> Keith Sweat. KC show up? Hell no. Oh. Did JoJo show up? Hell no. Oh. It was called Keith Sweat, Jodeci, and it was no KC and JoJo. <laughs> Tough, that's an entertainment product. If you ever flip the ticket over and read them little words, guess what they say? <laughs> that's on you, bro. <laughs> that's what they say. So, nah, you can't get your money back. They don't owe the fans anything. It, you feel for the fans, but when, it's what you said. It's not Indianapolis coach and Andrew Luck. It's the Indianapolis coach. Exactly. And were, were they misled? Absolutely not. You could see that emotion. I said, he didn't want to retire. He felt like he had no choice. They have a Super Bowl-type team. It hurt him. It hurt the owner. It hurt the fans. This is sports. Get over it. It happens. It is what it is. A refund? Nah. You, if I consider giving you a refund, you can never get tickets again. You get this refund <laughs> now, that's it. <laughs> so if you really want a refund, were you really that much of a fan? Okay, we'll refund you. We don't, don't come back now when we start winning. Don't come back. Uh, exactly. A former Colts long snapper, I think his name's Matt Overton, he now plays for the Jaguars. He's actually offered to buy any disgruntled fans' tickets back, and he'll donate the tickets. Man, they to, paying long snappers that's what big I, money now. Yeah, like, Man. <laughs> Matt. And he's, he said he'll donate them to Riley's Children's Hospital, oh, the tickets. Nice. But I'll be honest with you. I got to get to this Casey and JoJo deal. <laughs> they I weren't there. What you mean? I, I want my money back, look, too. <laughs> I went and saw them in Las Vegas with a bunch of old school, you know, yeah. 90s, 80s groups. Yeah, yeah. And Casey and JoJo were there. But KC was so drunk, <laughs> he could barely get through the songs. And he sounded Horrible. So I didn't miss anything? No. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> them dudes stay on tilt. They that's stay. like that's my favorite group of all time, Joe. Really? Oh yeah. I mean, them and the Isley brothers, because I okay. think they're the modern day Isley brothers. Okay. And when they were in Char they come from Charlotte. And I worked at the Charlotte Observer and I wrote a story about it before they became mega stars. Love KC and JoJo, but when they ain't no way sauce. <laughs> yeah. They, particularly KC. Bucky Brooks and Vinny Bonsignor are back. Let's move to Cabo, where Ezekiel Elliott is busy working out with Hall of Famer Marshall Falk. It looks like Zeke is still waiting for the Cowboys to make him the highest paid running back in the league, which would mean topping what the Rams gave Todd Gurley in a deal a lot of people are doubting these days. But when Falk was asked if Zeke would miss games to get what he wants, the Hall of Famer turned, tape, turned the table saying, quote, the question is, are the Cowboys willing to have him miss games because they don't believe he should be the highest paid running back. All right, uh, Marshall Falk transitioning off television and perhaps into a career as an agent. Mm. Uh, he and Zeke both represented by Rocky Arsenault. Uh, so I think these comments are really coming directly from 
Zeke and his camp. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can distance it. Is it unreasonable for Zeke to want more money than Todd Gurley? I say no. Uh, it's not unreasonable as well. It's unrealistic, <laughs> yeah. I think, right now. But unreasonable, certainly not. He has a great argument uh, that will get undermined. But his argument is I'm a top running back in this league. Plus, let's talk about the cap increases. Uh, that equals, hey, I should be highest paid. And it's a simple formula for him. But then the pushback comes, and this is why it becomes unrealistic. Jerry Jones has spent a lot of human capital in the investment of Zeke being focused and disciplined. Uh, also, he has two years remaining on a contract. And also, this is not the way to get into any negotiation, bring my ego out. Because Jerry's personality and ego is now in this conversation. He went from good cop the entire offseason and then switch. I've earned the right to talk to Zeke and joke with Zeke. <laughs> it's, a, it's a different negotiation. So I don't know where this goes, but I don't think it's going anywhere fast. And I certainly don't think it's going to go to the tune of Zeke having the biggest house in this neighborhood. This doesn't seem real. And unfortunately for him, uh, the best thing that ever happened to him was Todd Gurley getting that contract that, that, that he got last year, this time last year. The worst thing that happened to him was December Todd Gurley up until now and the great uncertainty that, that is surrounding Todd Gurley. So on one hand, he was thinking, I'm going to get be, I'm the next guy in line. Todd Gurley put it to that number. I'm going to top that number. Then Todd Gurley becomes the Todd Gurley of December and January and the uncertainty that he is right now. And now teams are like, and it's the Cowboys in particular, do we put that kind of money into a running back? The way the NFL views, the way the NFL values running backs now is tricky. It's just different. It's not to say that the running back position isn't still important. It is. But there's a longevity issue that's associated with it. And also, it's just an easier position to be able to find an answer to. I'm not saying that everyone's Zeke. I'm not saying that everyone's Todd Gurley. But you don't necessarily need that if you've got a good offensive line, if you've got a good quarterback, and you've got good wide receivers. You can get it close to that or close enough to those two kind of guys to be a, still a, a championship team. And... I don't know, but the last few Super Bowl teams didn't have a Todd Gurley or didn't have a, a, a Zeke Elliott. In fact, they had anything but when you look at the Philadelphia Eagles and the New England Patriots. That's a lot of ifs that you have to have if you don't have one of those guys. And when we talk about the last quarter, the quarterbacks that have won without those guys, it's one common denominator. Tom Brady. Tom Brady does it. He wins consistently without it. So did Nick Foles. Mm. He did. <laughs> he did. In four games. He did in four games. Now, here's what I'll say, and here's why I kind of get a little annoyed by the Todd Gurley thing. Before Todd Gurley went off the field, like week 12, week 13, Third Todd Gurley was, yeah. he was, he was everything. Absolutely. Todd Gurley was living up to the contract. His performance met his compensation. He was still one of the top guys. And even though C.J. Anderson had some success, I think people still forget that game against the Cowboys where C.J. Anderson had big right, numbers. Right. So did Todd Gurley. And so, Todd ooh. Gurley makes a difference. Mm. Todd Gurley is a special player. And I think what has happened, because there are a lot of people that are weighing in on this argument. You have the analytics people who say the running back is meaningless. But it does matter. Because Marcellus will tell you, when we sit in meeting rooms, all scouting reports aren't the same. Mm. When I hear C.J. Anderson, my look is one way. <laughs> when I hear Todd Gurley, hey, we perk up a little bit. Hey, get your big boy pads on. Mm. Zeke Elliott is yeah. an important piece to the Dallas Cowboys puzzle. They're different when he's not on the field. They can trot out and play those games without him, and they may even win. But defenses will defend them differently than when he is on the field. The, the, the reason why I don't think his demand is unreasonable is because I think his Zeke is more valuable to the Cowboys than Todd Gurley is to the Rams. And that's not a slight on Todd Gurley. That is a statement about, well, the, you know, the Rams have Sean McVay, one of the most creative young play callers in the NFL. He has great value. They have Aaron Donald, the best player in the football, in my opinion. The Cowboys have a lot of really good players. And maybe the guard they have, Martin, Zach Martin, maybe he's the best guard in football. I don't know. He ain't uh, Aaron right. Donald. And so and the Cowboys, I think Jared Goff has more upside than, than that. And so... I look at the Rams and say, yeah, they figured out a way to do it without Todd Gurley. I'm not sure the Cowboys can figure out a way to do it without Zeke. Well, sometimes it's not what you want, but when you want it. And yep. I will say one totally. thing to Marshall so he can tell Zeke, because this is all, they're <laughs> one now. <laughs> timing is everything, and Zeke has horrible timing. One, let's stay on the field. Let's yep. stay with the Rams. As last seen on a football field, 
Ezekiel Elliott let this team down. 20 carries, 47 yards. A lot of people forgot about that in that Rams game when they should have won that game if he gives them some kind of performance, but it still was a great contest. Then the Vegas stuff in offseason. Zeke is Zeke in offseason, so you got to deal with that. And now, timing is everything. Two years remaining on your deal? You're in Cabo? <laughs> Come on, man. Like, if you want Jerry to give you money early, make him eager to do it. Right now, you're trying to pull it out of Jerry instead of your play and your personality pushing Jerry to that place. It's and, not work. and the other part of the timing is what happened to Todd Gurley. That's in Jerry Jones's, uh, you know, mind when he thinks about how much am I going to invest in a running back? And you made a good point. There's a lot of good players on the Dallas Cowboys. They have to pay those players. And if you're going to devote that much uh, th that much money to your running back, it's going to come at some cost. There's not – this isn't the baseball where you could go over the salary cap and pay a luxury tax. This isn't the NBA where there's a million different ways to fit somebody under the cap. Every dollar that you spend has to be checked off on that salary cap. And eventually, you have to be under that salary cap. And the thing with Todd Gurley that, that shows that maybe that's not the wisest investment is we don't know where Todd Gurley is going to be this year or next year or the year after that. It's probably not going to get better. So if you're looking at Zeke Elliott, that could be my Todd Gurley. Do I want to get tied up with that much money knowing I have to pay you know, uh, my quarterback and everybody else? I'm not so sure that that's the wisest move. move. I'm going to go back. I'm gonna, I just want to mention this because I believe there are a lot of parallels between the Rams and the Cowboys' plight because I also believe that Todd Gurley is the engine to the Rams' offense. When you take Todd Gurley off the field, Jared Goff plays differently. We talk about all the play-action passes or whatever. Part of the reason the play-action pass is so effective is because number 30 is back there. I believe Zeke is the same. And we have to get to a point where we pay the players for their importance and their value to the team as opposed to the position because – Jerry Goff is going to get a lot of money. Mm. Now, is Jerry Goff going to be a top five quarterback based on how he plays without Todd Gurley? I don't know. I think you could put Todd Gurley. I think you put Todd Gurley and Zeke in the same category. I think you put Dak Prescott and Jerry Goff in the same category. I think those guys are compliments to the running backs, and I think Zeke has a good argument. The timing is horrible. I, I, right. I think mm. you make a hell of a point about we've allowed analytics to come in and destroy common sense and context. We just look at the numbers. And the importance to a team and things like that is being eliminated based on position. And so we're making the game so, like, anybody can allegedly understand the game. And as it relates to timing, I really agree w with both of y'all in this sense. I'm going to argue the other side of it in terms – Zeke's timing is terrible, hmm. which could lead to – this is an unreasonable request. A and I'm going – because this happens to – a lot of people, and I can personalize it to myself. W when you have been hit with the tag of bad behavior, and, and I've been hit with that tag, you got to do some work to, <laughs> to get people to go, oh, no, 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 Th that was an isolated deal, or that narrative's untrue. And there were things I've had to do in my professional career for two and three years to show, no, 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 this is who I am. Yeah. And, and so I almost think Zeke would have been better off Sure. Reporting to camp, good behavior, then sit. Mm -hmm. Say, you know what, I'm going to go through everything in camp the right way. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be a leader. But I'm not playing day one unless y'all get me a new contract rather than being in Cabo. Be in the environment and showing them, like, this is who I am. This is who I'm going to be, Jerry. You have a better chance of forcing his hand that away, out of sight, out of mind. A little Julio Jones in this game. Play. Yeah. T.J. Houston-Zada and Bucky Brooks are back. Let's move to Indianapolis, where life goes on for the Colts in the wake of Andrew Luck's shocking retirement. With Luck gone, the team will now turn to Jacoby Brissett to save their season, with the former backup saying that he's been on a roller coaster of emotions since the news broke that Luck was walking away from football. <laughs> I found this interesting. I was reading about Jacoby Brissett. Where he's on this emotional roller coaster. And I don't buy it. I don't think he has mixed emotions. I think maybe in the first hour, mm. and then after that, he was on the phone with his agent, his mama, his girl, his brothers and sisters. <laughs> we about to get paid, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you dream about this opportunity to be the starting quarterback of a football team? Yeah. There's no mixed emotions here. Um, you just literally define what mixed emotions is. You know you did, right? Yeah. Your first reaction is neg negative. 
I personalized this story with him because I was in the same position as Jacoby Brissett when B-Day happened in Buffalo, B-Day. Cut Bruce Smith, Thurman Thomas, and Andre Reid all on the same day. My first thing Ooh. was like, whoa, what the hell are we doing? We're going to be sorry. I want to play with Bruce, not him gone and our team's going to be worse. Then I got on the phone with my mom. I was like, oh, it's old. I'm about to get this funny. <laughs> it's a wrap. It's all about me. But that's mixed emotions. You're conflicted. For an hour. It counts. <laughs> and, and look, I, if I had my way, I would have still said Bruce here. I wouldn't have. You, well, Jacoby's different. He's a backup quarterback. Uh, he don't get a rotation like a D lineman. But I do believe that his first reaction was natural of negative. And then he's like, but I got to see the upside, the silver lining. Like in football, when somebody goes down with a devastating injury, you going to be all right? Move it up, 10. And then <laughs> yes. Let's just keep plowing through it. I think that's how he felt. No, he certainly feels that. But I wonder if those emotions or a little anxiousness, anxiety, nervousness, because now it's that opportunity. He knows he has an opportunity to really break the bank. If he plays well, mm. he's going to get a big Jimmy Garoppolo-type deal. Yep. That is significant pressure on him. And can he handle it? He also steps into a situation. This team has been built for Andrew Luck. How quickly can Frank Reich shift the gears to make this team one that plays to the strengths of Jacoby Brissett as opposed to number 12. 100% roller coaster of emotions. When Andrew Luck retires, he's probably like, wow, really? It's a short Is he really going <laughs> to retire? And then he realizes, I have a lottery ticket Boom. that I can cash in March. Mm. That That's what this is. I got this lottery ticket that's been handed to me, mm -hmm. and I can't cash it till March. Mm. And if I play like trash, I done lost the lottery ticket. But yep. if I play well... I'm cashing in. And that that is a roller coaster. Of, you go from planning to be the backup and hope you get an opportunity next year to where I'm starting this year and I got a chance to make sure my entire family, generation after generation, Lord. that's a roller coaster of emotions. Oh, hold, hold on. Let me rephrase the question there. Okay. Today, is he off the roller coaster and it's just one thing? Oh, well, it has 100%. to be. Okay. <laughs> but what yeah. about act like he didn't get on the ride because he's walking away. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, you, you the roller coaster had off. one heel <laughs> and then it finished and he got off. Yeah. There are roller coasters <laughs> like that. Yeah. There are That's roller coasters far, like that. Right. They got the roller coaster <laughs> down, up, down, up. That's it, y'all. Yeah. Not all roller coasters got twists and turns and you're on it for two minutes. Some of them like go up there, boom, free fall. Get your butt off. Who's next? And I think he's in that situation. I ain't going to be a lot, of you, a lot of you, big dog. Remember when you was coming through the crib January, February yeah. last year? You know, Colin is going to be off the show. Yeah. I had mixed emotions. I was like, damn, I don't want Colin to leave. But damn, I'm about to get mine. I'm about to work <laughs> with my dog. Like, that's how it goes. And I've been in that mindset ever since. No one wishes ill on Andrew Luck. But you got to move forward, Jay. Look, I think all of his anticipation right now moving forward. He's past feeling sorry for Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck's got his hundred million. Mm. Now is Jacoby Brissett time. He what was he like a fifth or sixth round pick for New England? Third round pick for the New England behind Garoppolo and uh, Brady at one point. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so here he is now with his own franchise and not only this, this guy's stepping into what is supposed to be a Super Bowl they type roster. Team. He's getting the same opportunity Dak got to, to hop into a limo off top. Mm. This is an incredible situation that to me, and I guess all I'm saying is like the roller coaster rides over, it's nothing but excitement. It, 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 the anticipation, the whole, it's like, uh, I don't want to crack a bad Chris Rock joke, so I'm going to stop. No, don't do that. <laughs> I just told you I was happy to work with you. Don't make this over. <laughs> but I will say this. Everybody at this table all want it. We all want mm -hmm. opportunities, but it does matter how you get them. Like, you don't want them at the mercy or the, the disposal of somebody else, especially somebody you're connected to. Like, I'm not rooting against you, even if you were in front of me. I never rooted against Bruce, even though I was wanting my moments. So I'm not going to put that on. That's Jacoby. how I got mine. But I'll say that to yeah. me, uh, Bruce Smith got cut. Yeah. Uh, Jacoby Brissett got his opportunity because somebody quit. That's mm. how I would love that. Retired is a, another word. <laughs> <laughs> quit? Uh, quit? Uh, quit? You got a problem with me saying uh, Andrew Luck quit? Colts fan? Down. He, he did. That's what he did. Quit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's be real, Marcel. You quit? quit? So when you stop doing this show, you quit or yes. you retire? <laughs> if I move on to something else, then, then that's different. But if I just say, hey, 
This is it. Next! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to another quarterback with a lot to prove, oh. Carson Wentz. We know Carson has, has had some bad luck with injuries, and after being asked about scrambling less and operating more in the pocket, Wentz responded saying, quote, that part of my game is definitely not gone. It's still going to be there. But if I don't need to, why would I get out the pocket when the O-line is holding up and I can find guys to get the ball to? I want to ask you, do you like Wentz's new approach? Yeah, it's the only approach that's going to last for a long time. Mm -hmm. We'll see if he does it, if he follows up on it. Yeah, let's see if he can talk himself into those moments because right now he's trying to, but live bullets goes back to natural instinct and, and repetition. If you're conditioned to do one thing, it's going to be a difficult task to change it up. Man, like you are who you are, player. Thank you. Like, he can't change. He's going to play the game the way he's always played it. Once they start having those live bullets, he's going to play it like he's always done it. If you read the quote, doesn't every quarterback stay in the pocket unless you have to get out? <laughs> so he's going to stay in the pocket anyway unless the protection breaks down and instinct will yeah. take over. Some people have natural instincts. I'm, I'm hopeful that he's going to follow through. This is, this is the truth. Every day I drive past the McDonald's <laughs> on the way home, and my instinct used to take me through that drive through. I tell the Uber driver, turn in there. For about a year straight, I haven't been in that McDonald's. I'm very so My dog. Keep okay. hope alive. <laughs> Uncle Jimmy's here to help us talk about our approval rating. You know. All right, Uncle. quickly, who's your big dummy of the day? Marcella you. said some. You. <laughs> Me. Once again, 17 times this year, I've counted. Mm. You done had to tell us at one point or another about you losing your virginity. <laughs> yeah, Talking about how terrified you was. That was a moment. <laughs> what about her? All right, look. Bro, that, thank you. <laughs> about her? That vision of coming out the shower with uh, the half towel around you. Obviously, so Andrew Luck's been the biggest uh. topic of conversation this week. A quilt. After just seven <laughs> injury plague years, he's now done without ever winning the Super Bowl. All right, Marcellus, uh -huh. Uncle Jimmy, was uh, Andrew Luck's career a failure, NFL career a failure? $100 million failure? Okay. Number one overall pick? Okay. If you just live and marry yourself to his expectations in a pass-fail system of grading, yeah, you could say he's a failure, but I won't. I'll say that the guy achieved what he desired. It was just different than what we expected, but he still lands in a good place. He's a memorable figure in NFL history, even though he wasn't the great as advertised. Uncle Jimmy? Andrew Luck was drafted first in 2012. One. One of five notable quarterbacks, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. The second quarterback taken in, uh, in the first round was RG3. Mm -hmm. Then you had Nick Foles taken in the third round. You had Russell Wilson taken in the third round. And you also had Kirk Cousins that was taken in the fourth round. So just based off that, Nick Foles was the first man in and the first man out. Nick so that Foles, means you mean Excuse Andrew me. Luck. Andrew Luck. <laughs> first man in, first man out. He's a, that's a bus. Straight up. A, I, a bus? A, a decent point. How would you rank those quarterbacks? Well, look at me, okay, Russell let's Wilson, look at it. Let's, let's me, look at it like quick. this. Hold on. Russell Wilson got a Super Bowl. Nick, Nick Foles got a Super Bowl. Oh, that's the only grade, huh? Okay. The only grade Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins pimped the hell out of the Redskins, got all that money. <laughs> no, he got it out of And so that puts Andrew Minnesota. Luck just a little bit above RG3, just simply because he can slide a little bit. <laughs> hey, RG3 was the rookie of the year. He was on the cover of Madden, and it was not noted that he had a coach that tried to kill him in his rookie year. That's true. <laughs> That's true. So since y'all agree with me on all of this, Interesting. you're using me on the Whitlaw. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get to the point of discussion. Whoa. My money. <laughs> okay? In the rap world, what you're doing is called sampling. <laughs> in your world of journalistics, it's called pillagerism. <laughs> Plagiarism. What? Pillagerism. It's called taking credit for something that ain't yours. Principality, <laughs> Smokey. What you See, I ain't about? Andrew Luck. I'm Russell Wilson. <laughs> I know you got me in the fourth round, but I damn it, don't don't play cheap. We 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 playing in the championship game. Now. <laughs> Third round, right? Hey, you might have Third. your hands on the oldest rookie of the year and MVP in history. <laughs> <laughs> you dumb. Bottom line, right now, what? Uncle Jimmy got a lot of mouths to feed. <laughs> I mouth. just took on these blue M&Ms, and we got to step these negotiations up. <laughs> Look at Zeke in the back. <laughs> hey, I got Lizzo now in my DM. Oh, I was in trouble. Truth hurts. The truth hurts. <laughs> hey, talking about you better check the DNA. I'm 100% that chick. <laughs> but I can't be no side chick. Uh, we got to talk about that. Back to my money. I'm, <laughs> but, but I want to stop. Back to my money. I want to stop you because I, I damn near halfway agree with you about Andrew Luck being a bit of a failure when you consider number one pick, 
You compare him to those guys you did. Russell Wilson, you'd have to consider better than him. Yeah. Nick yeah. Foles has won a Super Bowl. Ah, don't I'm do that. Yeah. After four games. Yeah. Kirk, That's Cousins, four games. Kirk Cousins made a lot of money. and He still helped. And other teams still help. Where does Nick? Where does uh, Andrew Luck rank on that list? Andrew Luck is where down there with RG three. Andrew Luck went farther in the playoffs. Don't do that. Hey, I tell y'all what. Don't Patriots give me my do. money. I'll text you from Cabo and tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't enough money to feed them M and M's, bro. They ain't got that kind of budget around. Hey, here, it's gonna take some time. You gonna add Lizzo <laughs> to them M and M's, man? You, <laughs> you got a full Snickers bar going. On. L to the Lizzo, H to the Hizzo. All right, let me do my approval rating. <laughs> I'm dropping Andrew Luck to a 48. Damn. Uh, all the way down to scout team from yesterday. Mm. I took away all of his job performance, knocked him on character mm. and authenticity after mm. my Whitlaw today, 48. Wow, you just like them Colts fans, emotional. All yeah. them red, de what's called them debits you got today? Nothing changed, Andrew Luck is still retired. He hasn't said a word, but now your reaction is different. Why they call me Flip Flop. I change <laughs> positions all the time. That ain't uh, why they call you Flip Flop. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> Twitter has him at an all-star level. Tell him why they call you. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, Yo, we doing it. No commercial. <laughs>